We want to find out if the airbags in old cars can be relied upon. So we've brought our specialist fifth gear crash team to a disused airfield in Leicestershire. We've bought a 10-year-old Rover 600. It's a standard, everyday car that's clocked up just over 124,000 miles. It's had a hard but typical life, and we want to know if its airbag still works. Nobody crash tests old cars, but we're going to. And what's more, with a live crash test dummy, it's our friendly neighbourhood stuntman, Steve Trulia. We've asked him to tell us exactly what it's like when an airbag goes off in your face. We've got a car behind me in the distance there that's parked up. I'm going to drive this car at exactly 30 miles an hour, head on, nose to nose, with the other car. There'll be no crash helmets and safety harnesses. Steve will experience the impact as a civilian would. We're quite literally going to expect the airbag to go off in my face, as if it would if I were driving down the street and somebody pulled out and I had a collision with them. We'll be using this military spec high-speed camera to see exactly what happens to Steve when he crashes. It's capable of recording a thousand frames every second. We've also got a specialist crash-resistant miniature camera that will be on board with Steve on impact. One of the dangers with this type of collision is lower leg injuries. The floor pan of the cars at 30 miles an hour start coming in and breaking in, depending on what you hit. One of the big dangers to me is my, that my ankles could get crushed or broken, that I could have knee or hip injuries, or that my thighs could get trapped as the fascia comes in and traps me against the seat. Another big danger is if the seat belt fails, and they do, not often, but they can fail. Um, I've spoken to people that have done several crash tests with crash test dummies, and sometimes ordinary seat belts fail. If that happens, that will make my hips come forward and push my knees up against the fascia, and at 30 miles an hour, that energy is going to break my legs. I think it's interesting to show people out there driving in the street what the car's going to be like, what a 30 mile an hour impact is going to be like for real. So we're kind of on the edge, on that crossover point of where I'm ceasing to become a stuntman and starting to do something potentially dangerous. There are a lot of unknown factors here. I am a little nervous of this because I normally have a four-point harness on, I'm normally in a fire suit with a full-face helmet on and a completely rigged car with a roll cage in it. Today, I'm in an ordinary bog-standard car with no protective equipment, so that's quite daunting. With Steve as ready as he'll ever be, the paramedics and fire crew are called in case anything goes wrong. Final checks are made and it's time for the crash. And remember, nobody's sure if the airbag in our 10-year-old car will actually deploy. OK, in about 10 miles an hour now, 15, 20, 25, 30, this is my impact speed. Now 28, 30 miles an hour. That's the impact. Hard, bro, hard impact. <sighs> oh, that hurt my wrist. Everything's okay. okay. Yeah, everything's absolutely fine. Yeah. That was good. No problems there. Um, I hurt my wrist a little bit on the impact. Um, the bag in the face was quite um, a shock, actually. Interestingly, even though we were expecting it, I was surprised by the airbag going off. Um, it felt, well, it was just a bit of a shock. My wrist hurt a bit, as I say, probably because I was bracing, because I was expecting the impact. Um, other than that, no major problems. I don't know, our floor pan looks a little bit distorted, I think. We'll look under the carpet. But no, nothing too major there. It was a, a pretty hard whack, though. I wouldn't want to be doing that if I wasn't expecting it. I wouldn't want to be out in the street and that happening inadvertently because someone pulled out on me. The airbag worked, although the seatbelt did a remarkable job of holding Steve back. And that's the idea. An airbag is a supplementary restraint, a kind of last resort. Uh, I think it's quite dramatic, actually. It was. I felt the force of the airbag opening. I felt the compression in the air. And this is quite a tough piece of rough nylon material. So I think that would be a pretty unpleasant thing to have smack you in the face, actually, especially if you're not expecting it. 
Yet the amp bag makes a surprisingly loud bang when it goes off. I was very surprised. Um, I'd read that it could be up to 160 decibels. Um, I didn't expect it to sound as loud as it did, and my ears are still ringing a little bit from it. The smoke is a mixture of sodium gases that inflates the bag and talcum powder that keeps the bag supple while it's stowed. It's a pretty potent mix, and ideally you shouldn't linger long inside to minimise the chances of your skin or eyes being irritated. This test was a success. Our 10-year-old airbag worked as it should, which goes some way to inspiring a bit more confidence in the safety of old bangers.